Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy Podcast. Uh, this is episode 278. Yeah, I just looked it up. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, 278 for the week of September 20th, 2016. My name is Ryan Higgins, who is here with me this I feel like I'm, like, catching on my tongue here. September 20th, 2016. My name is Ryan Higgins. That sounds better. There we go. Who's here? On my left. Brock Sager. Around the table. Toby. And Charlie. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hello. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, We have our fun game of the month to play right here. Let's do it. We're we're just jumping right in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got got a handful of new stuff to cover this week. We got a bunch, bunch of questions. Uh... Yeah, kind of quiet week, although a few good things to talk quiet. about. Quiet? We had a guest come in. We had a guest come in. Well, oh, you, last week. Yeah, but yeah. that was before That was uh, before we co- recorded this one. Correct, correct. And we came to see you at a special club. Okay, so you want, you want to talk about our... Fuck yeah, I want to talk about this. <laughs> okay. Explain to me, after all these years, why can't I see Ryan Higgins with, like, a black cape... So, some some guy liner and some crazy boots and blades coming out of your neck and shit. So Toby and our uh, listener Josh, who was here with us last week for the Geekbox, um, you guys actually came out. Uh, or <laughs> I guess he wasn't here for the Geekbox. No, he's here on the weekend. Sorry. Um, you guys came to my club where I DJ. Yeah. Uh, for the past eleven years and change. Yeah. And you finally came out to watch yeah. us DJ. I told you we're the worst DJs ever. <laughs> it was awesome. Like I don't know what you expected. <laughs> I don't know what I expected either, but I was expecting something. Well, you got something. Yeah, we came in, and I think everybody was dancing their own little world, which is very, very interesting. That to sounds see. like a goth club. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then, and then I, I, um, you know, hung out with you, and you didn't have to DJ for like two hours. Hours because we talked to you for two so, hours. F- so to, to, <laughs> to, uh, to set this up a little bit for those that don't know, for the last 11 years, uh, I've been DJing a club in San Jose. Uh, a couple different venues. Is it always oh, it's not always that venue? Well, it's so a different it's, venue sometimes? It started um, at a very small club. Um, it was like a lesbian bar or something like that uh-huh. um, in Santa Clara. It's actually where we first started DJing. Oh, really? just, I mean, they had... Oh, M? Well, I don't know. It's no. The, it was the Savoy. The, well, Savoy. The Savoy. It, I, I don't know what it's called now. It's yeah, called it something M, else now. I don't know what yeah. it is now. But um, yeah, it's just. I mean, they had. I don't want to say normal nights. They, they would. You could just. You could just have any night you want, right? <laughs> okay, I mean, okay. I mean, they were a traditionally a lesbian bar, but at, at night they would just be whatever nightclub they wanted to be. Uh, so we had uh, a night there for a year, and. We did it like a Tuesday night. I mean, it was like the worst night ever. And that was around the well, time. Well, you I was, would do comic books and that? No, that was around the time I was buying the store. And we did stuff a little differently there. And I said, I can't keep doing this because I'm going to buy the store. We're going to change around our Tuesday nights. I physically yeah. can't mm-hmm. deal with the books. And this yeah. is way pre podcast and everything. Um, and so I, I was like, well, we, you know, we've done it for a year. That's cool. We'll just shut it down. You know, I didn't even think about it. So another club uh, in San Jose called uh, the Blank Club, who I've been going to for, for quite a while. And there, and the. The owner's previous club, uh, all the same people kind of transferred from one club to the did next. They own, did they own the cactus? It was a cactus, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, went, I, went, I think I went with you to the cactus. I went yeah. to the like cactus club twice. before. Yeah, so that, that were, that's where the old 80s night and goth night used to be since like the early 90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, my buddy Dave that used to work with me at Legends years ago performed there a couple of times. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah they had some pretty <laughs> big bands play there mm-hmm. yeah. considering how small that club was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nirvana played there. Yeah. Like, like in 91 or something like that wow. before they got like real yeah. big. Yeah. So uh, they had us do a one-off there because uh-huh. they like needed like a fill a night and we knew, I kind of knew all the DJs and the owners and stuff and they were like, we got a really good turnout and they asked us to come back the next month and for 10 years, we just kept going back. Yeah. Um. So they actually sold that club and bought a new club and that's way bigger, like four times as big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the problem with the stuff that we do, it's like, we're not San Francisco, we're not LA, we're not New York. I mean, it's a small group of people that are going to be into the stuff we play. So yeah. ever since we moved to this new club, I've been like, this is too big for the crowd we draw. Uh, the same amount of people at the blank club, it, we'll fills, it fills the place. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have a place that's four times as big, you have to draw four times yeah. as many people to have the same feeling. And well, I, I know that's they, not going to happen. They probably enjoy it. They have more more space to bubble dance. You know, but it doesn't look. Yeah, if it, it, looks, uh, it, it looks, looks really it, sad. No, it, it feels it looks slow. Bad. Yeah, and, I mean, and that was a busier night than was we had it? there. Yeah, yeah. So that's why that's why I've, I've been saying like, you know, I I love DJing, but I'm kind of 
at the. I think you, we're you'll at have the to let us it. know when your last night DJing is. So yeah, we can all come you can out. all come out. Well, yeah, yeah. It was. Very... Will, I will go for the last one. Nice. I've never been, but I'll go. Well, for the you last should. One. It's very. It's very amazing to see the Ryan Higgins DJ. And and this time we had not only was I there, my other DJ partner Kevin, but our friend Jared, who's doing more stuff. And his friends. So normally there's only two of us there. Yeah, but so you there's got actually four. four of us DJing. Yeah. So I DJed for like an hour and then changed the entire night because we just bounced back and forth. So 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 it's really funny. Over, over the years, when I heard that you DJ, I'm like, man, you, like DJ, you scratch and you all this crazy stuff. No, and no. then you 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 yeah, you always told me no, you don't do that. I'm like, all right, all right. So I'm less interested. <laughs> I finally came out to see you. I'm like, I wanted to see some stuff. This is how Ryan DJs. He looked press at, play. No, no, no. He looked at his paper. He went down to look for a CD. He came back up, looked at the paper again. He went back down to, to look for the CD. You put the CD in, took the CD out, you put a different CD in, you press play. That happens sometimes. Yeah. I, and, I, I appreciate the fact that you're still using CDs, though, because I've seen far too many places just hook up an iPod at this point. Oh, yeah. Well, no, yeah. I'm, my, my one guy uses uh, a record player, or, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, um, uh, laptop, and it's much more convenient, but yeah. you have the problems of a computer. CD has all the problems, and they're heavy, and you get to carry everything around. Well, the, I've never done vinyl. It's too, it's out of my league. Uh, at one point, you even turn around, and you were just putting your hands up and go, what the hell is going on? It's oh. not playing. Oh, it's and you had like, guys coming over to look at things. You're pointing. I'm like, ooh, this is great. You know, at one point, yeah, <laughs> my the it just it kept kicking out one of the CDs. And oh, I, is that what? Oh, okay. Yeah, we couldn't yeah. figure out what was going on, but I, I loaded something else in and it seemed to work, so bad CD. Or, nice. I mean, it happens. Nicely right? recovered. It happens. But, Nicely recovered. Yeah, no, I mean, I yeah, we're press play um i mean it's not like dead silence play on the next song i mean we no, try no, to yeah, that's good. I mean, mix the flow as well going. as we can yeah, but the flow keeps going yeah it's yeah. it's it's not like it's the flow is the there beat. that's all you need yeah it, you're, it is you're, more you're difficult about, you're about one step up from a wedding dj yeah i sure, I, sure, sure. I, uh, I i am very annoyed that all my requests were not played <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't even think i i, I understand they're a little out of the ordinary at that specific <laughs> club <laughs> Yeah, there was a uh, there was a the girl came out that came and asked for the Smiths and was like, "You mean forty? And she looked at me going, "What are you talking about? <laughs> Get out of this club!" <laughs> we've had some weird we've had some weird people come up and request stuff. We had a guy at, like me. Before, uh, I want my rock set, my Queen, my Def Leppard, my uh, <laughs> well, I, just, I might play half that before yeah. you got that. Oh, end of the night, last couple songs, we'll play anything. Yeah, Kevin always plays Wham. It's great. Okay. Um. Uh. We had a guy totally flip out at us like half like early in the night before I saw him. Were, Oh, I, that's how we walked up. We walked up, and there's some guy yelling at Ryan and, and, and DJ Heaven, as I call him. And yeah, he friends. was mad. He's flipping people things off. Yeah. He was like, ah, da, 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 and he walks off. I'm like, this is going to be a great night. Super drunk guy at 1030 decided that we just weren't playing the music he wanted to hear. So, and you know, guys you, were you the were worst DJs ever. Comfortable, he got, yeah, he got very mad at us. Yeah. You know, at 1030, when the party's rocking, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> like nine people there. I'm like, what do you want us to do? There's no one here. Well, I, I, don't, I, I think people need to understand kind of how the nightlife around here works it's there is nothing none. <laughs> there is none but nothing really starts happening until after 10 30 because most of the people that go out are finally getting off Can their job at the well, mall I, that's what, well <laughs> well you a lot of tech guys in the golf scene that work late and stuff and I, that's what i told toby i'm like by 11 usually it's it's okay yeah. like if it's dead at 11 forget it yeah. it's over um, but yeah. I actually enjoyed the club. It was fun. Yeah, I yeah. actually really enjoyed it. I I was just kind of disappointed. I didn't get to see no guy liner on you, no purple hair and spikes. I used to dress up more, but not anymore. yeah, some some not chokers anymore. and some earrings. No. I I never went. Well, I've always oh, had an earring, but giant giant boots. I have my dogs. I don't get. I never got like <laughs> like really crazy dressed up. Some people do. black fingernails. I used to do that all the time. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm just lazy now. That's all. That's uh, the problem. Man. Stop being lazy, man. Let's I want to see some. Why I, I want to see some stuff? shit, man. Stop being lazy. <laughs> Maybe I'll go for Halloween. <laughs> um, Maybe they should just request Leanne to post old pictures of you. I have. To, you've seen some pictures. No, no, pictures they're great. I think they're awesome. That's why I was so excited about coming to this club, and I was like, Ryan just looks like Ryan. What's going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about some comic book stuff here. The, the wait, that's what they're listening the, for. The right? actual, uh, the actual thing that we do here. Yeah, uh, we have some comic books that sold through the month of August 2016. A lot of comic books that sold August 2016. Let's play our fun game of get you guys guess what title sold. But then we're gonna have a nice long conversation about this month's sales charts. It's a extended part of this segment. So throw out some titles, guys. August. Batman. 
Batman, yes. Batman 4 and 5. Number 6 and number 7 comic at 152000 and 142000 Keep in mind, those are returnable still to this point. Uh, it always feels like cheating when it's double shipping in a month because yeah. it's just like if something's in the top 10. Yeah, it's 5000 instead of 10. Um, Harley's number one. Harley is number one. Harley Quinn number one at 359,000 copies. The now, only reason I know that is I've moved so many boxes of our Harley yeah. Quinn covers. Yeah, as well so as like, number two at 116,000 copies. Was number two sold? Yeah. It was number two spot? No, that was number nine. That's number nine, okay. Yeah, number one was the number one spot. Now, keep in mind, all these books are reduced by 10% because they are returnable. So uh, Harley sold closer to 400,000. And not only that, the average comic sales chart is is thought to be about 10 to 20% under what they actually sold. Mm. These are estimates. So Harley could have broken 450. We just don't know the, the top number there. But I'm assuming like score store exclusive covers are not returnable and no, all that kind of correct, thing. So, correct. so of that four hundred thousand, uh, twenty four uh, covers, eighty covers, eighty. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. So about half of that is not returnable. Yeah, maybe maybe forty percent is not yeah. returnable. Yeah, because yeah, I mean yeah. they had to get like three, three. They had to get three thousand of each one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah at least the, yeah at a minimum. Yeah. No, wait, that's 80 counting the sketches. The sketches, right? oh, okay, yeah. So okay, okay. So minimum 45. So there's copies. probably more like. It's a lot. There's, it's, it's a lot, but yeah. yeah. Actual covers, it's yeah. 80, but actual art is only. Yeah, I'm just like saying that. that dropping the total number when part of what props it up is all the yeah. incentive. Oh, yeah. The covers. first three books on this list are at. Actually, well. We'll, we'll talk about the number four book in a second. The, at least the top three books here on this list are absolutely because of uh, store exclusive covers. Mm-hmm. Um, there are three of them well, this month. The next one is Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, yep. Number three for uh, issue number one, sorry, mm-hmm. is the number three book at 217,000. Also, Suicide Squad Rebirth, uh, is the, that's the one shot. That's the number five book of the month at 177,000 copies. Mm-hmm. Uh, All Star Batman. All Star Batman number two. One is the number two book of the month at 289,000 copies. That, of course, has store-exclusive covers along with Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are only missing number eight, ten, and number four. Eight, ten, and four. Hmm. It's one Marvel book on here. Holy crap, really? Yep. Uh, Was there a Civil War two? No Civil War in no August. Star Wars? No Star Wars. Oh, wow. Star Wars got beat out. What book came out in August? <coughs> From Marvel, it's not. It's not number one. I uh, mean, it's the first part of a story, but it's not number one. Oh, is that that is that is that, that Amazing Spider Man? It is Amazing yeah. Spider Man number sixteen was the number four book at one hundred eighty five thousand copies because that, of store exclusives, that's, right? We'll talk about this in a second. Okay. That's the first part of the, um, the Dead No More, the before Dead No More. Before it's Dead the no More. prelude to yeah. to the thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I always know <clears throat> preludes as part of it. <laughs> sure. So number eight and ten, it's a book that st- still exists. It's still around. It's a normal shipping. It's a DC comic. It's one of the Rebirth books. It's a big title. It's either it's Detective. It's not number one. No. Okay. Is Detective ten? Nope. Okay, so Detective didn't hit there. Number ten is a Rebirth title. Rebirth number one, a special one yeah. shot. Um. Oh, okay. So it's a Rebirth uh, title. Yep. So the Rebirth. Last month. Red, well, Red Hood and the Outlaws was last month. Nope. Supergirl was last month. Supergirl. Yeah, Supergirl, that makes sense. Supergirl Rebirth number one was the number 10 book at 112,000 copies. We're missing number eight. It's a big team. Justice League. Usually seven people on it. Justice League. Justice League. <laughs> number two is the number eight book at 127,000 copies. Now, number one, two, and three. Harley, All-Star Batman, and Suicide Squad. No question asked. This is because of the store exclusive mm-hmm. covers. They bumped them up by a significant amount. I mean, Harley... Yeah. Way. Mm-hmm. All Star Batman and Suicide Squad had a decent amount, not a ton. Well, All Star had six covers. They had they had or s- five. They had like base covers. They had five base covers. Okay, five base covers. I'm sorry, no. Yeah, yeah. They had four base covers. The sketch plus store exclusive covers. I mean, I, I there, the blank cover. You mean the blank? I, yeah, the, the sketch. Okay. Yeah, sorry, the blank cover. Yeah. Uh, and Suicide Squad had the two covers. Uh, plus, it had it had that awesome Libra Mayo variant. Plus a handful of store exclusive covers. I mean, nothing like Harley. Harley had, I think, 80 covers. Those two had a handful on mm-hmm. top of that each. So, you know, we have another 20, 30,000 copies. Um, so the majority of All-Star Batman and Suicide Squad is not store exclusive covers. And I think probably about 40% of Harley mm-hmm. is from store exclusive covers. I mean, these books would be the number, probably the number 
they, they would be these book these this high anyway. I mean, yeah. they just wouldn't necessarily be number one. Yeah, yeah. These books would probably be in a very similar order, or uh, you know, not too far off from this. I mean, All Star Batman may have been uh, a little higher because it had so many base covers, but. How many uh, did it sell again? All Star Batman, yeah, uh, two hundred eighty-nine thousand. Okay. So the very this Amazing Spider-Man number sixteen at one hundred eighty-five thousand. This is sort of the weird outlier because the previous issue of Amazing Spider-Man sold eighty, I believe, eighty-three thousand copies. Um, and I mean, it was a, it's a good seller, right? But it 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 sold uh, where is it? Yeah, eighty-seven thousand copies for the previous month. So I don't I don't actually know. Was that a Civil War tie-in? No, there hasn't been any amazing Spider-Man Civil War books. So it's just this before, but I don't there, think. That well, there was, there was a little bit with the Iron Man, Miles, and all that going on. That was in That's Spider-Man, Spider-Man, not That's Amazing. Not amazing, amazing. Amazing, oh, hasn't, yeah. amazing hasn't had a hasn't had a Civil War time. And yeah, so I don't I don't know if this is a, a misprint or I don't know what caused this book to go so high. It's not because of it's the start of the crossover. I mean, there were some variant covers. But something else is going on with the Spider-Man book. I, there's no, I have no idea why it sold a hundred thousand extra copies. Maybe Dan Slott bought a hundred thousand. <laughs> Maybe he did. So I, if any, I, I'll, I'll poke around after this episode to see if I can find out why. But I was blown away when I saw that this was on this list. I knew Spider-Man was on the top ten, but I didn't realize it was number four. It was number four, and that it was a, it was more than double the previous issue. It's not because of this story arc. Like I'll tell you right now, it's maybe not. somebody at Marvel paid a store to order a shit ton of them. I, I just, <clears throat> I that that'd be a lot of money and unlikely, but I, I don't know why. So maybe there are a number of store exclusive covers, and I just didn't know it. But that's there would it's, have to be. It's a weird arc in dozens. general that they're starting right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, for a hundred thousand. Okay, so you figure maybe a ten percent boost, twenty percent boost because the story arc. It's not going to go crazy. So you're up to a hundred thousand, you're fine. But where did these extra eighty thousand copies come from? That's you're, you're talking thirty store exclusive covers at that point. Yeah. There's no way. I, I don't. I, I, so maybe a con. Um, Could be. And we've seen this with uh, a few books. This champions book coming up. The belief that Scholastic ordered. Well, wait, did did uh, did Marvel's collector box include it? I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's part of it. It shouldn't be. Well, no, it, because it, it, if they did a variant cover for their collector box, but that shouldn't be through Diamond, is what I'm saying. All right, so I have no idea. And it's the same with Champions. Obviously, Champions is getting variants from it's it's selling to other markets. Maybe they sold them to Disney. <laughs> maybe these maybe. are maybe these are going straight to this, the to the Disney stores and everything. I have no clue. Yeah. Um, but it's a crazy amount of extra books. Yeah. Uh, so that's a. So uh, we just need somebody to tweet a picture in a warehouse of you sitting on all those boxes. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's real weird. Um, so, uh, commoncron.com, which you should all go check out. Uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Um, absolutely. Uh, John Jackson Miller gather runs the site. Absolutely great. You know, you should try and reach out and see if you can get him on. Uh-huh, maybe. I, I, I've sent him. We've talked on Twitter once or twice. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. He has 20 years of reporting. Uh, this is now his 20th year of doing this. And the uh, diamond shipped ten point two six million comics to North American retailers in August. It's the uh, highest it's been in the entirety of the diamond sales charts. Uh, it slightly edged out April nineteen ninety seven. And the only reason that was it was the very first month where all the publishers again uh, were carried by diamond because there were times where Marvel backed out of diamond yeah. and other companies. So, uh, and this was when the bubble burst. Uh, mm. for the comic industry, this is around the same time that I mean, by '97 it was compl- it completely burst. So we're still increasing over the height of the mid '90s bubble, yeah. which is just ridiculous. If we go first one year ago, units but shipped. Go ahead. It, given the fact that well, I'm just trying to think because I mean, some of those early numbers for like Spawn number one and all those were like crazy high right but they didn't have sales charts uh, yeah. going back to 92 okay. yeah, they don't record. go back quite well, that I mean, far i mean how many i mean they used to print millions of copies of the old yeah. the old old stuff like S- some like there was tons of that stuff that was being printed. but there wasn't 
six hundred comics released in a year. No, or, no, and I'm sorry, in a month. Yeah, no, yeah. there was only there was only maybe a handful of them released. Yep. But I mean, Action had a Action Number One. Didn't that have a sizable print run? Yeah, but we're but we're talking modern. Yeah, no, no comic no, no. sales. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the '80s, the top books were selling half a million copies. The the yeah, but there was still. 100 comics being published. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, we didn't have a top 300 comic sales chart. I mean, it's a very different market now. Yeah, so. I guess all I'm saying is the the state of the market we have today is nothing like the state of the market when it burst previously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very different. Uh, so first one year ago, they shipped 43% more comics versus five years ago, 51%. You go back all the way 15 years ago, up 57%. So just an absolute insane amount of comics. Um Total dollar sales for thirty four point one six million uh, dollars in comics just for August. Just for August, yeah, Holy shit. yeah, yeah. So there were five hundred and seventeen comics released, two hundred ninety three graphic novels. So yeah, a lot, a lot of comics. And so you know these these sales are you know people keep whole oh, comic industry is dying. I, I like what 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 are people looking at when they say this because these numbers they're okay. I'm sorry, there was also an article on Comic Run this week about the returnability of comics over the last couple of years, how occasionally they'll have books that pop up, and they're like, oh, these are returnable. Mm-hmm. He tracked about 100 comics that had been made returnable. Uh, I believe three of them, by the end of the year, actually sold less than the 10% estimate mm-hmm. drop, right? because they, they decreased those books by 10% on the charts. Most of them sold equivalent, so... Most about yeah. about ten percent were returned, or higher. Mm-hmm. So less than ten percent were, were returned. And in the case of some of these uh, rebirth books, you know, Batman number one will not drop at all. It'll go up more because there was three printings in number mm-hmm. one. And I mean, if you look at the new fifty two and that kind of stuff, none of that got returned. very very. I mean, you're talking yeah. a percent here, a percent there. Yeah. Very very few got returned. So yeah. Uh, these books, we will get returns for for July and August, no doubt about it, but it's not going to be the 10%. It's going to be a very small portion. Uh, and yeah, uh, so just a, a critical success uh, just every way you look at it. Well, back to your, your comment about people <clears throat> saying, oh, comics are dying. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand where that logic is coming from based on I – mean, I mean, if you look at the amount that's coming out in comic books and – I mean, there's more of a variety now than there's there really has ever been. I mean, yeah, it feels like we are continuously at the greatest point in comic history. Mm. You know, Image, Marvel's obviously taking a fucking beating. Uh, oh, and I didn't actually go through the um, the actual percent here. Let me grab that. But, you know, Image has started drifting down. Uh, Marvel's obviously having their own problems, but they're still really well. Uh, so the overall units, DC was 44.59% of all comics shipped. Jeez. Marvel at 32%, Image at uh, 7.78%. Dollar-wise, Marvel, uh, DC was still 39.27%. So 40% of all dollars going in went to DC. Uh, 30.7% to Marvel, 7.66% to Image. So Image, nearly flat dollar in unit share. So uh, Marvel also... In the top 300, Marvel had 100 books in the top 300. DC had 71. So DC did that much better with 30% yeah, fewer with, books. Yeah. And so it's going to be, again, when we come to September, some of those numbers are obviously going to still come down, but we're going to have a huge new number of DC books getting closer to that Marvel number. Doom Patrol sold amazingly well for every store that carried it big. Uh, we sold out like at a number that I did not expect. I mean, I mean I'm ordering rebirth numbers on Doom Patrol, and we sold out. Mm-hmm. It's mind blown. Um, did you know I didn't think you had that many? Between the there were six covers for it. Hmm. I I matched like my low end rebirth numbers. Okay. Yeah, spread, yeah, yeah. Out, spread out between all the covers. spread out between all the covers with and we the sold main out. cover having. Like half, like more, yeah, mm. yeah, like two, like like a third was mm. the main cover, yeah, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, it's, this is big, big, big numbers for DC. Obviously, uh, you know who knows what's going to happen. Of course, in the next few months, obviously they're going to have some uptick with uh, Marvel now, but not much. Well, I mean, the uptick on Marvel now, there's there's not really any any buzz about it. I mean, there, you know, nobody's talking about what's going to happen. I mean, Civil War 2 talk has kind of well, just died. Even Rebirth 
the buzz wasn't overall positive for a long time until the issues started landing. Started and shipping. then the yeah. buzz yeah. went insane. Yeah. Sure, sure. But the thing is, is the buzz behind the titles that are coming out from Rebirth are buzz about big titles. What are we having a buzz about? Oh, you should go read that solo book. Oh, you should read... Well, there know, are no big titles, yeah, there's quote no, unquote. Yeah, there's no big titles. Yeah. So it's 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 like you're, you're going to have all these small titles. I mean, I know Charlie is is totally excited for that Luke Cage book. Yeah. You know, and, and there there are certain titles that have a little bit of buzz going with them. Yeah. But overall, I don't think. I mean, I haven't. Nobody I've talked to in the shop or really even nobody talks about it. No, I, I've had some people sign up for them, but uh, very low interest. You know, obviously, I'm not going to quote anything from a private retailer forum uh, that I go to. However, I will just say that um, <clears throat> retailers are not excited either they're let's, not, just, they're, let's just put it that way they're not going to be hitting those variant numbers. uh very few of them yeah let's just say retailers are not excited for marvel rebirth either uh, marvel rebirth marvel now either um i would be very excited for marvel rebirth so you know uh, i mean proof will be in the pudding right we'll see in the next few months october will be interesting but i i know what my numbers are and they are low mm. low low and of course the books are getting replaced i sell 10 copies of the books that are coming up, I'm ordering 10 copies of. So for me, it's a wash. Oh, yeah. A little bump for number one because of variants. Fine, fine, fine. But by number two, three, four, it's going to be exactly where you're, it was you're, before. You're right back down to where you were before because you just got the variant so that you could sell a couple more books and you were done. Yeah. My my highest selling Mar- – take out Civil War because that's the event book. My highest selling Marvel book is tied for my lowest selling Rebirth title right now. And what's our highest selling here? Uh, for Marvel – Right now, my highest is, I think Spider-Man and Thor are tied right now. Amazing Spider-Man and Thor are tied for our highest selling. And they are tied with our lowest selling Rebirth title, which is New Superman. Yeah. So. Oh, man, that's scary. Yep. That's okay. I'm expecting his New Superman (laughs) numbers to drop way down way fast. So It already has. Yeah. And it's tied for Marvel's highest books. Yeah. This is my bottom tier for Rebirth, but, is my top tier for Marvel. But given where, how long Thor's been running and that kind of stuff. Sales are very sta- stable yeah. on Thor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You know what? I actually, I am mistaken. As of this new previews, Old Man Logan is now our best-selling Marvel title, and it is higher than New Superman. By a well, couple, by a, because Old Man Logan's amazing. By a couple it's copies. By a couple Old copies. Man Logan's great. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not higher than Aquaman, our second lowest title. <laughs> so, so Aquaman is beating Old Man Logan? There you go. Yep. Oof. Yep. Yep. Just the only one. So, yeah. I don't know. Comic sales. This is uh, always interesting to me. I don't know if anyone else listening cares. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd be very, very curious. I would I would assume that the people who listen to the podcast know what they're getting right now. <laughs> So if you yeah, think Marvel seventy eight episodes in. Yeah. So if you think uh, Marvel is going to take this laying down... You better not believe that because they're going to come uh, full force with Marvel now and bring you the greatest comic that's ever been published. And uh, actually, I'm sorry, uh, they're releasing 50 variant covers for USA Avengers number one. Sorry, sorry. Uh, 50 state. 50 state covers, yes. Covers. We, we are getting uh, – US Avengers number one is getting 50 state covers just no. like Justice League. No, no, Huh? Not U.S. Avengers, USA Avengers. U.S. Right? US Avengers. Yeah. U.S. Avengers. Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. Whoa. Whoa, turn that porn off, Toby. What's up? Uh, U.S. Avengers uh, number one is, good stuff, though. is getting uh, 50 state variant covers mimicking the... Uh, the good stuff he was talking about was the porn. I yeah. just wanted to clarify that. Mimicking the, uh, the uh, Justice League... Uh, state covers Justice from League, a little while Justice ago. Justice League of uh, America, yeah, the one that uh, number one, yeah. Who was that? Brian Hitch? Or no, no, that was. No, the, that was that can we can we can we can we can that book and just have a U.S. Year. agent book? I'd be <laughs> all over that. Fifty U.S. agent variant yeah, covers. I'd be all over that. And so, of course, the great state of California, our home state, gets the most asshole Avenger of all time, Iron Man. That's our Avenger here. Oh God. Captain America's Delaware, and you know, so all these random characters are going to appear. As oh, it's part just of their one state. character ab- uh, yeah. on the cover. Yeah, yeah. where's Speedball going to go? <laughs> if he's part of it, I'll buy it. You'll buy one copy. It's going to be some deep south, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I am excited about that new Hulk book that got announced. Uh, yeah, they announced a few new titles mm-hmm. as far as Marvel uh, solicitation. Thanks, Tyo. Hulk. Huh? Yeah, 
Well, I'm saying thanks, Tayo, who was pointing it out to me. Yeah, just Hulk. Uh, it's a yeah. Hulk book called Hulk, okay. but she's very angry. Yeah. I'm oh. really looking forward to that book. I would be very angry if I was her, too. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they no. cut the she off of my book. What the fuck? Yeah. Spitting out of the events of Civil War 2. No, I'm really looking forward to that. Wait, you mean the event that's not going to be done by the time this comes out? Yes, ah, correct. Stop being Get negative. It. No, but he's true. It's, it's, oh, it's entirely stop being true, negative. but it's, it's a given that we covered last week. Yeah. I'm sorry, I wasn't here. That's okay. We all forgive you, bro. Jesus. So I again, do that shit to you when you were missing a week or two or three in a row. Th- things like this. I try not I to hit you. three. I you. got a new puppy. I hate you. Th- things Damn like these covers puppy. will get a bump, obviously, for yeah. one issue. But, you know, we'll see. I, I've, as you being a perfectly fine writer, but this, you know, a, a third-tier Z-grade spinoff Avengers book has no hold with with any audience right now. Mm. I don't see why it would sell better than New Avengers or anything else coming out right now. So, in fact, it'll probably sell significantly worse because of the characters that are on the team. And Al, Al Ewing's just not a, a draw for most people. So, who's doing the, the She-Hulk book? Hulk? She-Hulk I don't book? remember the artists. Um, it looks good. I can look it up, but yeah, I'll look it up. Well, <clears throat> if there's one person at Marvel that says that we're not ordering enough comics, it's our favorite <laughs> friend. And our favorite friend meaning... Someone I've had a long block on Twitter because he's really annoying. That's Dan Slott, right over Amazing Spider-Man, Silver Surfer. I thought you titles. were going to say Bryce Larson. No, 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 no. no. Bryce like, Larson. What did you do to him on Twitter? Bryce Larson, who's going to block me on Twitter if I don't stop posting political stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Dan Slott, perfectly fine writer, kind of an annoying guy. But, man, he's insufferable on Twitter. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't deal with him. Um, He he did put out a, uh, a nice long uh, uh, twit longer. Appropriate name there, um, where he said Wait, comic, that's a thing? comic, re- yeah, yeah, it's just a long message you can put on Twitter. He says comic retailers, please read. Um, you did not order enough copies of Clone Conspiracy Number One. Clone Conspiracy Number One being the miniseries event for this Dead No More thing that's going on with Spider Man. He says maybe we didn't explain this well enough to you, but Clone Conspiracy is the core Spider Man title of the year it is the event book of the year now for a series called dead no more and a comic a called arc. amazing and a story arc called dead no more and a comic called amazing spider-man why would you call this book clone conspiracy why not amazing spider-man the clone conspiracy or amazing spider-man dead no more miniseries one through five like this book is why is this called this so i ordered it like i order everything else as a weird little crappy miniseries well this is your main book you, customers don't know it. Retailers don't know mm. it. I said this on Twitter. I not even tagged him, and he still retweeted me. He <laughs> still found it and answered me. I, I said, if your book is called, if Clone Conspiracy is your main title, it should be called Amazing Spider-Man Clone Conspiracy. He said, yes, this is our fault. This is Marvel's fault and our fault. We should have done this, but we can't. We can't change it. The book hasn't come out yet. Of course you can change it. Well, they probably well, but it. I think he means. No, there, with, the book was on FOC yeah. this week. It was not too late. They knew. They could have changed this if they wanted to. They could have pushed it one week and changed it. Changed the art. Could have happened. When he put this up, when he put this up, it had not finalized orders yet. So they, he agreed with you. They, huh? He agreed with you. Yeah. And then said, but we can't do anything about it. Sorry. They may have bosses. Well, any event, I just want to point out that the last time Jan- Dan Slott went to the internet specifically saying... You need to order more copies of this. Trust me, I can't give anything away, but you need to order more copies of this. Yeah. That was the start of Superior. Yeah, and that was a very different time yeah. for people. I'm just saying well, that he doesn't well, do it often. But the thing yeah. is, is but the thing is that was in Amazing Spider Man. That was I'm a, just that was saying a single he issue. He doesn't go to the internet very often to basically say there's something significant here, you should probably Get on board. Charlie, are you defending him because he's a fellow Huvian? <sighs> I'm defending him because <laughs> no, he doesn't kidding, cry I'm wolf <laughs> constantly. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm actually joking about it. But he's a big, big Doctor Who fan. Oh, yeah. I remember when he used to have all sorts of fun putting Spider-Man on top of like a toy TARDIS and <laughs> posting pictures of it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they, they believe that uh, this is going to have some major repercussions and that everyone's going to be talking about this. But... Uh, you know, oh, okay, it's another... So, basically, my favorite character, um, Ben Riley, is coming back. Yeah, when you say clone in Spider-Man, 
Ben Riley is coming back. People the original not. Scarlet Spider is coming back to join the new Scarlet Spider. I would not order a single extra what? copy because of that. What? He okay, needs to order. Okay, one extra for you. Maybe two if the cover is cool. <laughs> but right, I mean, okay, if it's that big, tell us more. Tell us why. Is more? Make it returnable. Or do something. No, yeah. you're just going to be, nope, order big? Nope, sorry. If it's that important, you would have found a way to make us care. Well, I think is, I mean, a lot of a lot of times it's like you, you order big on Marvel. What are you stuck with? Books, everything. Yep. Like it, it's it, it it doesn't pan out. Yeah, Charlie, your example of of the superior stuff that it's a fair example of when he said something and yes, it panned out. But all, how many times since then has it been? Who ordered this big? And stores are stuck with. Yeah, yep. but there's a difference between a statement from marvel itself saying order this big because it's the typical sort of pr and everything and somebody who's known for let's just put it this way if john jeff john said people need to order this book oh because, ryan like, would have already ordered it by then before yeah. he even t- finished the tweet oh, the top numbers would have been from ryan he would have just bumped them up by 20 percent. 50 but i'm just saying that this could be crap and this could be the proof that you can't listen to him but so far he hasn't cried no. wolf so there's I, something I, I think to the, that. i think the issue is 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 the clone conspiracy it's the name right it's amazing spider-man had it was a issue understandable this yes it's their screw up but yeah they should have anything with the name conspiracy and is just crap okay <laughs> like it should just be garbage. ignored and not not God. listen to every week on itunes or at comics conspiracy or, work at, Jesus, or I mean. net. um but i just I, if it's that important you fucked up and you've killed you've limited your sales from start and and maybe uh, i'm just the- saying if you didn't at least do a minor bump because of that it may end up being you who fucked up if that book does take off similar to the last time. I mean, I'm matching this. my Spider-Man sales, and I don't see okay. them going any higher than that. I don't see that this is going to draw any ton of extra people, maybe a few. And we're getting some variants. Uh, there's always variants. So there's your there's your 25% bump because mm. there's a handful of variant covers. So, But we'll see. By two, three, four, I expect it will be the same as Spider-Man. Well, it's a miniseries. It's like it's... It's an event book, so it's a event miniseries. Oh, okay. And what are they going to do? Bring back Ben Riley? I'm sorry. What are they going to do? Bring back uh, uh, Uncle Ben? Maybe Ben Riley? Okay. Both of those are terrible ideas. <laughs> Uncle Ben as a spider. <laughs> like more oh, spider? You know you they're know. bringing back Doc Ock. Is what sure, they're going to do? Sure. Okay. Uh, that uh, yeah, we saw that was gap. I mean, that's, yeah. they've that's been telegraphed the entire season. Yeah. The entire series. Uh, the entire series. No, it's sorry. okay. Marvel yeah. wants to be considered seasonal. But I don't even know, like, that's not, a, bringing back Doc Ock's not a, I mean, it's big within the context of Spider-Man, I guess, but it's not a, that's not extra sales. I mean, he's been there the whole time. Yeah, but the whole idea of, okay, so I have been reading The Amazing Spider-Man, and the way they've already kind of shown what they're doing with Dead No More, and it makes sense to me why it's called The yeah, Clone I, Conspiracy I, I caught up on it, everything. I caught up on it. It's so been it, okay. It's a clone it, octopus? Well, but I guess what I'm saying is Do we have if they bring back Doc, Doc Ock, it doesn't necessarily mean it will be Doc Ock with the same level of abilities or whatnot. They could go any which direction with this. They could give him spider abilities. They could do whatever the fuck they wanted. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're going to bring back Uncle Ben. Or maybe they're going to show the Uncle Ben that died was a clone and the real one's been out, you know, being a spy. <sighs> Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I thought that was a good merger of the origins. No, it's so <laughs> terrible. Like <laughs> Dan Slot can keep trying to push this Spider Man's this clone stuff, but <clears throat> no. No. Uh actually I don't know. The, technically speaking, Marvel's been trying to come up with a way to redeem all the Spider Man clone stuff for years now. Keep trying. Yep. <laughs> so we actually got an email about this very similar topic, so let me let me read Scarlet this. Scarlet Spider costume is still the best with the blue hoodie. Uh, this is an uh, uh, email from Lester. Or, sorry, this is a Twitter Lester question Hayes. from Lester. He says, why does Dan Slott get so much hate for Amazing Spider-Man? Last month, issue sold over 185,000. What gives? Well, we talked about that, that that number is not real, and we don't know what's up with that. So that's 100,000 copies more than normal. It sells about 80,000 copies. Um, 
Dan Slott gets a lot of hate for Spider Man, and I think it comes from part of it's just 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 asshole asshole Twitter, right? I mean, that's just people are assholes on the internet, so you get that that uh, group they're, of they're tweet holes. For me, every volume of Spider Man that he's been involved with has gotten worse than the previous. It hasn't. It's been this. The start of this series was bad. It has progressed. It has gotten better. So you're talking about volume as when they relaunch it, number one? Yeah. So you have, you have like, big time and you have his early stuff, which was good. Kind of classic Spider-Man, well, that was the right? stuff when it was broken up and they had the different creative teams coming but in. But he and was, he, he was and, full-time. But then he became full-time. Yeah. So it was, it was towards the end of it, but there were breaks in between his So runs. that, I think, is the best Peter Parker Spider-Man, mm-hmm. right, that he's done. And then you have uh, Superior, which was awesome. We all loved Superior Spider-Man. Yeah. But that was, again, that was the Doc Ock Spidey, so separate, but... Equal to his previous one. Okay, then you get the next volume, which introduces Silk, and it was that, and that was that just kind of meandered all around. And then you have the Spider Verse stuff. Basically, I mean, they they set up the whole Peter Parker dealing with the aftermath of stuff that Doc Ock did while he was yeah, in that his was, body yeah, that was the, the whole, aftermath run that yeah. the Silk came in, yeah. and then it finished with uh, Spider Verse, and then after Spider Verse, we got. Well, then we have the new volume, which yeah. goes back to Mr. Negative, one of the worst. I hate, or not Mr. What's his name? Negative? Mr. Negative? Mr. Is Negative? That his name? No, negative Mr. Man? Negative. No, Mr. Negative Man's the no, DC guy. Right. Sorry. <laughs> no, Mr. Negative. I yeah. hate, like, bad character that he keeps sh- shoving back into the book. At least we're not like, getting that alpha asshole character again. Like, that character was legitimately the worst character ever. Oh, but alpha? Uh, the one, about the one that. he was trying to mentor? Yeah, remember that oh, piece of shit God. character they tried to force into Spider-Man for a couple months there? Worst yeah. character. At least they aborted that quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Not soon enough. Abort Mr. Negative, too. He's, he's, uh, they he's aborted boring. it quickly enough that I repressed all knowledge <laughs> of it till it just got brought up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, what this volume to the last compared to the previous compared to the previous i mean are you, charlie you're you're kind of the spidey guy are you feeling this cuz i'm not um it's okay there's but. certain aspects that they've done that i've enjoyed quite a bit but the main sort of arcs of what spidey's doing hasn't been the stuff i'm enjoying it tends to be more the peter parker inner inner relational stuff has all been good mm mm-hmm. mhm well, this the new one. This is the the new one where it's kind of like he's he he's the big business guy now. He's got like the army of Spider Men that he's kind of taking well, over. He's not in, really an army, yeah. But yes, he he has a handful of Spider Men that he can kind of call yeah. in when he needs to, and then he has shields involved. His head of security pretend to be Spider Man occasionally, just so people don't think he's Spider Man. Yeah. And the the pitch of this clone conspiracy stuff is that there's a company out there that as of this last issue, can bring people back to life. Dead people, yeah. or clone people, right? So. And Was that, that like, have to do with Regent? No. Okay. No, I this another, is separate. Regent, another recent, character. Regent appeared briefly they, in what I was talking about before with Iron Man. And There's another got character that needs and all to go away. Fight. But no, this is a group that kind of came out of nowhere claiming they could essentially clone organs and whatnot to save this guy's life and then peter spidey since started going crazy but i guess the the interesting part for me where they kind of did it is he sent in his head of security prowler to go get more information on this company they ended up killing prowler and then bringing him back and are now basically leveraging what he needs to continue living to change sides basically like prowler back in the day yeah the spawn looking dude yeah. Oh, he's still around. Now he's going to have his own comic. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not Prowler, though. It's a clone. Or Prowler. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Assuming there's not more to it than just cloning, which. Yeah, it's weird. The way they're kind of doing it is it's not like a direct clone. It's like somehow they're resurrecting people with their memories, but restored to their non fucked up selves. Yeah, this, before this sounds, they get. This sounds or awfully whatever. like Amanda yeah. Waller trying to get. DNA from Re- Resurrection Man, and then that's what she uses. Oh, this sounds more like a Doctor Who episode. Oh. Members, I mean, I don't. Uh, that's yeah. that. Ha- I mean, that that was the New Fifty Two stuff. Oh, I forgot there was actually something I was going to mention earlier that uh, I didn't. Um, if you remember last week, I was saying there's a ridiculously crazy rumor that no way possibly could be true 
Um, and if it happened, we would find out hopefully before the next podcast. Well, at least for now, it appears to not be true. The rumor I heard, and this actually came from a retailer, which is weird, uh, was that Marvel was going to increase all the price of their books to four ninety nine. Oh uh, no! As of this most recent previews, that is not the case. That is what I had heard. So hopefully this is not the case in January. Sees a very expensive jump in Marvel's books. Uh, I actually, I, I don't believe they're going to do this. I am, I am, fir- I firmly believe they will not do this anytime. No, no time soon, at least. Yeah, I, they, I would find been, it really oddly timed to be like, we're going to raise all the price of our books right after DC just kind of put a line in the sand saying we're keeping our books. Well. It, it could offset their dollar loss, but I think it would crush them as far as sales. I, I think well, their sales would, would plummet worse than the price More increase. stuff would get canceled. More stuff yeah. gets canceled means you're now leveraging the books that are selling to make up that loss. And yeah, you're back I, to where you started. I, 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 I honestly don't believe Marvel's going to do it, at least in no time soon. Uh, they have been experimenting with a lot of 499 first issues and 499 599 annuals. Mm. So they're out there, uh, but they are oversized. Is it Civil War? Over- yeah. 499? Yep. But it's oversized. But it's it's an event book. It can get stock. away with it. So they definitely have a number of 499 comics every month. There's there's a half dozen or a dozen of them. So they're they're out there. Daredevil does – or Deadpool does 999 and, issues. I mean, to be fair, it's not like – DC doesn't have some 499 issues also. Oh, all the Doom Patrol yeah. stuff and Cave Carson, that's all 399. Um all but their... like All Star Batman is mm-hmm. 499. That's 499. Yep, cuz it's oversized yeah. and has the cardstock cover. Sure, sure. Uh, but I'm um, line wide 499. Yeah. I don't think is happening anytime soon. No. So Yeah, the Suicide, I hope not. the Suicide Squad most wanted that's 499, but that's it's, like two it's, comics. It's two comics. Yeah. yeah. It is two full issues. Yeah. yeah. So, cuz it's two different stories. But is All Star All Star Batman's not double shipped though. No, a single sing, yeah. once a month, once but a oversized. Month. Yeah. yeah, I think it has like an extra like five or ten pages, five or eight pages or something. All right, we got a handful of questions here. Let's get through some of these guys. We got uh, one here from Problematic Cartoon on Twitter, but we got a reply here from a guy uh, Jared on Twitter. Uh, he says, "Am I the only one afraid?" Oh, so they solicited finally the Nova comic. Oh, they did. Yep, they did, and it's full of classified, redacted, blah 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 blah. So they didn't. The word "rich rider" no appears nowhere in this solicitation. Are right? you sure it's not spelled out in all the redacted black ink? So he says, "Am I the only one afraid that the classified Nova solicitation is hiding the return of Sam Alexander's dad rather than Rich Rider?" Uh, and Jared replies, "Seeing as it a variant to Sam, it wouldn't surprise me if this was Sam's ongoing, and they just wanted to fool people to buy it." And using Rich Rider's helmet, but it's actually his dad coming back. It sounds exactly like Marvel. Just sticking it to me. Just, balls. Just, just sticking it to me. <laughs> just being like, hey, you know that Ryan Higgins guy? Let's fuck with him this month, okay? <laughs> I really hope it is because I have no interest in buying a Rich Rider Sam Alexander comic. I hope it is his father so I can continue ignoring bullshit Nova for as long as this character is drawn out. till the real righteous Nova, the man himself, Dick Rider, comes back. Dick Ryder, the best character of all time. That's what people that hate Rich Ryder call him. They call him Dick Ryder. But you don't hate him. No, I love him. I love Dick Ryder. I love riding Dick, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus, it's, we're, we're, we're quickly falling. Richard we're, we're Ryder. We're falling that bad. The one true Nova. He's coming back. Maybe not. That's what, you know what? You need to get that hashtag started. Hashtag one true Nova. One true Nova. Here's a question for Toby. Yeah. It's, a, it's for all of us, but, but it sounds like it's for Toby. Oh. It's from Wesley on Twitter. He says, What's, What's your up, Wesley? Who's your childhood comic book crush? Mine was Psylocke, thanks to the great Jim Lee. I knew you were crushing on some uh, on Jubilee back then. No, I think it was Psylocke also. <laughs> Psylocke or uh, Black Cat. That, that bathing suit. Yeah, that, that bathing suit. I knew, I knew you amazing. had all those. Uh, I know you had all those X Men uh, swimsuit covers. Swimsuit. Those were comics. awesome, man. That was like <laughs> that's like scoring Playboys back in the day. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, uh, that was it. Horn, Mary Jane in the swimsuit, the big poster that they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, uh, yeah, no, that 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 Psylocke in the bathing suit in that X Men. But I think before that it was uh it, it was Black Hat and fi- I think it was Namor with the the, the little trunks. I remember that. I remember <laughs> yeah, that dude, track. Namor that had some musclies going on, man. I mean, the and those feathers Talk on his Dick little Rider. ankles, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, you know, Namorita. I'm shit, and I'm gonna dig myself a hole here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just shut up and uh, I go, go away with this nerdiness. I guess. Yeah. You right? I'll just put it in a spot. I crush on comic characters. Don't be Fuck ridiculous. Fuck yeah, man! Come on, man. <laughs> why not, dude? I'm fucking. We got to be honest about this shit. I have a crush on uh, fucking Aquaman in the movies. No, oh, let's just say I didn't have the life-size Jim Ballant Catwoman uh, promo poster right you above did. my bed for many, many years when that when that was coming uh, out. I, so I'll, I'll give you that one. We'll just we'll just stop right there. Charlie, Charlie's looking around, being yeah. like, huh? yeah, Talia. Yeah. like, who are these people? Who is Talia? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Talia's always been good. Yeah, yeah. Talia's good. I, I did a lot. Yeah. I did have a a, a, a life-size she poster behind my door for. A couple years, or maybe months, <laughs> maybe months, and I was very. We know Brock and Geo Force. I mean, it makes sense. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In the bathing <laughs> suit, in the bathing suit <laughs> behind the store. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think for me it was probably just I, I like the swimsuit stuff was always like Jim Horn's art was just always really kind of that's what caught me. Is it Horn? Is it? Greg Horn. Greg, Greg Horn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because um, well, all Greg those Horn, that's not childhood. What? Greg Horn. That's not your childhood, is he? Does he go back all the way that far? Horn did like, a lot of stuff in those like, swimsuits. Like, did he? Like, like, the, like Marvel Masterworks yeah, time. That's like the early 90s. Yeah. That's like early hmm. mid-90s. He, he did a lot of that stuff. Because you're a child until you're 12. After that, you're a tween. Uh, oh, 12 then. That's a oh, no, story. Oh, that's a tween. Sorry. Uh, so is. This is uh, slightly spoiler. I'll... I'll I'll edit uh, slightly uh, spoiler. I'll edit a little bit of this. Uh, this is from Cisco. If you haven't read Detective Comics this past week, that's uh, the one I haven't read. Are you serious? I haven't read Detective and I haven't read Suicide Squad. Those are the only two. Can we save this for next week, please? Mm. Okay, uh, I'll redo this. Um, uh, Mr. Oz has removed uh, Doomsday uh, as of Action Comics from a few weeks ago. If you read that, yes, um, from the board, quote unquote. Uh, any chance the other person he has locked up, because there's another person locked up, we just don't know who it is, uh, is Connor Kent. Possible. Now, there was in the Rebirth book, uh, you do see uh, Adam. Uh, Ray Palmer is somewhere when he's talking to Ryan Joy, but we don't know where. So a lot of people think Adam's also been captured. Uh, Connor Kent could be, but I don't think they would bring back Connor Kent because of all the stuff they're doing with Jonathan. In, in making him now Superboy, he could still be Superboy. He could be Superboy Prime, older, <laughs> Super, not quite men. Yeah, I, yeah. What are you? Uh, super super teen? Super young adult. There we go. <laughs> super YA. Because yeah. the the Connor Kent, the Superboy, the new Fifty Two Superboy. I'm sorry, never. No, worked. they need to bring no. back Jeff Johns, Teen Titans Superboy. Yeah, that was the best Which... one. Which. I could see them doing through something like this because, don't get me wrong, I don't think they will replace the current Superboy by any structure of no, the he's imagination. Cool, actually. I, I'm digging but that. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to use Connor Kent to be sort of like the equivalent of Nightwing, but yeah. for the Superman family. I'm, I'm down for that. Maybe, I have no clue what they would the name him. Sons. Call him Flamebird. Yeah. You have Nightwing and Flamebird get to team up. That's where, that's where it comes from. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Although, I don't know. Maybe they become name. the legend. I don't know what they would call him, but I'm, I'm down for Connor Kent coming back. I love Connor Kent. Me too. Especially Tim and Connor teaming up. All oh, those guys are great. Well, I mean, they've been doing a very good job bringing in a lot of that Superman mythos back. Yeah. Especially because, I mean, you have the Eradicator who popped up recently. You have the Cyborg Superman yep. who's active right now. You have Doomsday oh, pop up. You, they're hitting you right in the '90s right yeah. now because yeah, yeah, right. All three of those yeah. plus sort of like so, many replacement well, Superman. Well, did you see who's up? on action? It says Jurgens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like from my mentality on it is he would kind of complete the set that they're putting together yeah. right now. Yeah, hey, you're missing one. You know, to give you information, I actually hated Jubilee early on. I thought she was super annoying, and I wanted her to die. What? Hey? <laughs> Jubilee? Oh, really? Yeah, no, I actually always... <laughs> I, it wasn't like till later in life. I'm like, okay, I can understand this character yeah, now. Yeah, and, yeah. But early on, I thought she was all annoying. There's a collar on that yellow coat. Problematic cartoon also asks, Ever have a customer only want to pull some issues of a book? Love year one in Wonder Woman. Uh, the other story isn't great. So Wonder Woman's going back and forth between yeah. two story arcs right now. Actually, I actually have a customer that is the opposite. He wants the main story, not year one. Uh, it happens. I mean, I have some customers that only want specific artists or writers or covers. So 
Wonder Woman's an interesting problem right now because of that, but most people get all of it. Hmm. It's well, both stories are great, and they're yeah. going to dovetail into each other at some point. So, yeah. <clears throat> so at some point, somebody's gonna be like, "Damn, I have to go back and pick up those issues." Yeah, they are. They are. Well, the cheetah, Suckers. the 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 year one story. There's a cheetah issue that's coming up that's going to tie yeah. in with the, the main story. It's, yeah. not, it's not the next issue. It's the I issue think it's after. eight. I think it's issue eight. Yeah. Yeah. So issue eight is because I because this just finished year one where uh, Doctor Min, Min I can't. Well, how do you say her name? Cheetah's original name. Um, Minerva, uh, Minerva. 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 I don't remember. What was her last name? I can't remember her last name. But yeah. Yeah. Her, you, she, she, she's she just got there. Yeah. She, in just, she, she yeah. just gets introduced. Yeah. So it's really. Barbara Minerva. <clears throat> Barbara Minerva. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, from Cisco. Oh, I'm sorry. From Brett. We got another one from Cisco. We'll do that in a second. From Brett, he says, uh, which rebirth title should I pick back up? Aquaman, Green Arrow, or Green Lanterns? I stopped all after issue three. What do you guys say? Uh, I, I know. I know. I know my answer. So. If the list had included the Hal Jordan and the Green, Hal's been yeah, that's been great, really good. The I've Hal been, Jordan books been <laughs> yeah, really good. Yeah, the variant covers on it not so much, but the actual books. But been really good. actually, the last issue of Green Lanterns was also really yeah. interesting. The way they resolved the Rage Seed stuff. Yep. I, Green Lanterns. I have to give it to Green Lanterns. Between those, yeah, I mean Green Arrow is my my answer, no question. I mean I love Green Lanterns. Aquaman's been really good. Actually, this last issue was good, but Green Arrow to me is just on another level. I, I think Green Arrow yeah. is one of the best rebirth books. So Green Arrow for me. Yeah, I it it's a toss up. I think all of these, all three of these books are kind of like on the same level for me. Mm-hmm. So like I enjoy them, but like Green Lanterns isn't as good as Hal Jordan, and and so it's it's yeah. And realistically, if it wasn't for this last issue and the, Green the way Lantern, that yeah. <clears throat> goes back into the mythology i would not be as gaga for it mm-hmm. but that last issue with the sort of reveal of what was going on yeah that, that got me i think my thing with green lanterns is i find the book really fun it's very i mean it's a serious story but it's very light it feels fun the characters are fun and funny to each other i don't know i really like that book it it, 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 it caught me off guard it's so i guess the way i kind of look at it is when they first when Johns was first leaving the title and they had all these interviews with people, they kind of talked about returning it back to sort of the street level, that kind of stuff. Not street level as in, but like what you get when you get to like cosmic street level, yeah. where it's not big galactic wars and all that. It's about sort of maintaining peace throughout. The, and then what we got from the actual book had nothing to do with returning back to sort of that, patrolling your sector, getting involved in sort of the criminal activity there. Green Lanterns is that book. They're only dealing with their sector. Now, mind you, the threat in the first arc was a pretty major threat and one that I kind of thought shouldn't have been the... Like, you don't go out of the gate with as big a threat as the Red Lanterns for two well, characters who are supposed to be rookies. No, I think you do, but it's the Red Lantern's kind of rebuilding. Yeah. If I yeah. had a complaint about the Green Lantern's arc, it's the way they would just be like, but soon, it'll be Red Dawn. Yeah. And we know, okay, okay, please come over here because have I told you about Red Dawn? <laughs> and the thing, when I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, I have to remember to talk about Red Dawn. Like, they keep going on. And, and like, what was that, right? Red Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Atrocitus keeps being like any reason to use the phrase Red Dawn in his <laughs> no, comic. And it kept, it, every time I saw it, it made me <laughs> laugh because I'm like, okay, we get it. We get it. Your Red Dawn is coming. We get it. <laughs> and the way they resolved it in the end made that work for me because yeah. it's not like the Red Lanterns were utterly defeated or whatnot. Like yeah. it, it, it did a very good job. They of, planted the seed. Yeah. yeah exactly. Literally. Yeah. I mean, Almost for me, literally. I think I think I like how we. I think the book really kind of has a nice duality to it in the sense that Simon, Simon is, 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 you know, he's the strong, he seems like on the, on the outside, he seems like he's got it all together, but you know, in, on the inside, he's kind of like, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm winging it. Whereas Jessica wears her insecurities on the outside and it's on the inside where she's processing everything. So it's kind of like this nice kind of difference, you know, well, he, well, here's something that I don't say very often, and it happens occasionally. Um, I think I like 
Sam Humphrey's version of um, of Simon Baz more than John's version of Simon Baz. Yeah, Ooh. I never, I never, Simon Baz never clicked with me under John's. Mm. It was, it. I never got the it, reason it, for the character. I never got. I mean, he just seemed like kind of angry Hal Jordan. Like I never yeah. got why this character existed. So when they kind of like just wrote him off completely in the new 52, like he never showed up in anything. No, I was like, was fine, in, he whatever. Was in, he I'm, was in justice league for a while. He was barely in the background. Yeah. And a lot of stuff, but not as a, yeah, they stopped him being a focal, focal point. Character. Yeah. yeah. But this version I like it, it, it's worked a lot better. And for going back to sort of, it didn't really show the point for him. Like, Again, the seed was there to what you could do with the character, and it never really it got explored until this yeah mm. the series. So, no, it definitely feels like he's getting his own unique voice now, yeah. which is good. All right, a couple of questions left from Cisco. He says some local comic shops give discounts based on the amount of books you purchase. Do you think Comicsology or digital publishers will ever do the same? If you mean uh, pre-order, like subscription or whatever, no. If you're asking if they ever do discounts, they do all the time. They have tons of sales on the weekends, mm-hmm. a lot of 99 cent sales. Uh, if you want to pick up full runs of stuff, they do a lot of bundles. So you mm-hmm. get stuff very cheap, so even cheaper than 99 cents. A lot cents. of times the, the graphic novels get dropped Yeah, real low. down real low. I'll always check our sale uh, page on mm-hmm. digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. They always have the same. But if you're asking about um, day one purchase or subscriptions, no, because that's where they make their most of their money, right? Uh, they're making a lot of money on that stuff, so... Uh, this is from Marco. This is biggest surprise or letdown of Rebirth so far. For me, it's Detective. He actually wrote Defective, but I think, I think he means Detective. <laughs> um, being far better than Batman, he's not feeling King's run yet. So that would be both a surprise and a letdown. I'll so t- did you block this guy? No, I, I love Tom King's run, but Detective is awesome. No, no, Detective is... His last I think, issue was incredible. I, I think... I think- Action wise and pacing wise, Detective has been a very very solid book. Whereas Batman has been, I mean, it has Tom King's unraveling kind of story where we get you know, it, it's a it's it's like oh here's something there's action in it, but it's not like Detective, which has just been out out the gate just holy shit yeah just real solid stuff with uh, Batgirl, Batwoman so. Batwoman. In terms of surprise, for me, it's actually the Hal Jordan book. Just because when they didn't pull Vendetti from the book, I was like, what the f- Who has he got blackmail material on? Why are they leaving? And then I read his Rebirth titles, and I no, still was be honest. like, er, I don't. But, oh my god, these be, last be, couple of issues honest. have it, it, turned me completely. It's Guyver's art that really really does it for you oh i was that was part of the reason why i was actually so upset when they announced (laughs) the new team because i'm like that is the perfect artist for green lantern green lantern and everything with the writer that has made me hate that (laughs) book for (laughs) now hal has been a nice surprise i i approach each issue (laughs) waiting for the hammer to drop and just like be like oh that sucked well, um, you did have a hammer drop in the first in yeah. the reverse. See, like I didn't hate Relic. I didn't actually hate uh, like the. There were some okay arcs. It just never. That, the, it was the first arc. It was that lights out that first arc right after John's. It was where an it interesting was like, concept. Where it was like, did you even read but anything no. on Lantern? But that's War? what I'm thinking. I, I'm thinking this series is either co-written by Jeff Johns or John sat uh, Vendetti down and said, "Look, let me, let's." Let me explain this to you. I, I'm pretty sure what ended up happening is Jeff Johns and him had a long conversation about what makes Lantern books great. Well, and as far as I know, they're still having these conversations. And some of the interviews, uh, now the Rebirth is kind of – these are ending their first story arcs. People have said, oh, yeah, talking with Jeff Johns, we talked about where we're going next. So he's still involved in all these books. And that mm, – he's so happy because we're going to get – God, 12, 18 awesome issues of all these Rebirth books. Um, for me, I mean, biggest letdown, letdown for me so far has been New Superman. It has not clicked with me at all. Uh, I I was hoping it'd be much better. I Because it was kind of the, the black sheep of the book. It was a new character. It's a new take. But I love the Great Ten comics. Uh, I, or the, the characters. I love what they've done with them. 
the idea of of having like this more international justice league sounded cool and but it just it 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 just i don't it it fell it's what toby said about being a cheap knockoff yeah comic and it just i don't care about the characters and when you're three issues in you gotta have something to hold on to and i i just don't care <clears throat> see i was hoping that would be my surprise but from all the initial solicitations like that wasn't really a disappointment it was more like yeah this is as expected as expected yeah. the, i think what's actually disappointed me a little bit is um all-star batman see because I, 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 I think all-star batman is b- bananas and i really like it but you and brock have both said the same thing well but here's my thing about it i like the premise i like for the most part what they're doing but the the betrayal aspect of it where it's like everybody's sort of betraying Bruce left and right so it's, far in the it's story. It's the yeah. most Snyder, Snyder Batman we've yeah. seen so far. It's Snyder yeah. with no... He can do whatever he wants to Alfred in this book, but I'm curious to see yeah. if he can pull it off because you can't and write off Robin. You can't write off Alfred. But how does Snyder play by those rules? What's the twist? Where's What's the change? And that's, that's where I'm... I'm hoping he has a reveal or something, but it's like... You had the issue where it seemed like, okay, Alfred did this. And then, like, the next issue, it's, okay, Commissioner Gordon's doing And it's just like, you're killing me here. It's doing a good job, right? Yeah. What's, uh, what's the guy's name? Toby's guy from We Are Robin. What's the guy's name? Um, Duke. Duke. He's he's cool. I yeah, like, like him I, in it. Like, I like yeah. Duke. The backup stories have been good in All-Star. Yeah. I, I think the, diff- the difficult part for me is the art. Like, it... it I know, I know, but it, it the the inker has done an amazing job making me it pleasurable to somewhat look at. But it the the story is amazing. Snyder's writing it definitely a really really great story. But I think for me it it, it breaks down when it gets to the art. Like I'm I'm wanting there to be little nuanced things that that you have to kind of pick up because that's what we even got with Capullo. There was so much stuff just kind of in the background or just in the way he. You know, Capullo drew Snyder's, you know, Snyder's Batman at the time, and I don't think we're going to get that with in All Star with Romita Jr. And I think that that's that makes but it, it suffer. Jock's doing the second arc, but, so like, it, I won't even care. Yeah, uh, like two, once Jock, like once Jock's on, I'm like, okay, cool, I'm ready to go because so, Jock. To me, when shit. it comes to sort of like the disappointment thing, it's like you know what you're getting when they announce the team on the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with the art. Like to me, I I know what I'm getting, and that art never ruins a book for me. Okay, does anyone have a problem with King Shark being called Trixie? I, I, yeah, I don't know where that comes the, from. That's what, a weird what thing. What the hell is that? Yeah, I'm Charlie, not sure where that comes from. You're the one that knows all. All why if is I, King Shark's name Trixie? If I have another disappointment, it's Superwoman. I like the characters. I love the art. I love Phil Jimenez's art, but his writing has never been the, the, the first the best. issue was okay. The second issue, like it's, I'm okay, it's I, a little, it's floundering. I'm okay with the title, but I want to get a co-writer or someone else on the mm-hmm. book because he his writing gets very lots of small uh, boxes, lots of small tiny word balloons, lots of very small like like blow that shit up, get more stuff going on. Well, it's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird comic. When I first read that, because I remembered it saying Trixie and stuff, I didn't think it was King Shark because I read King Shark, so I thought it was like Trixie, King Shark's muscle kind of thing, yeah. not King Shark muscle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's oh. so. I, I thought it was just some weird, obscure character that ran around with King Shark for <laughs> a minute. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, I think one of the titles that I was actually pleasantly surprised with uh, out of all these was the Blue Beetle Rebirth issue. It was okay. Like I, I was, I was really hesitant about that, and I actually really enjoyed uh, Jaime in this. It, I like the new take on it, mm-hmm. but at the same time, the hardest challenge with the Blue Beetle book is keeping me reading after. The first arc, mm-hmm. so I'm hoping it's got a good hook mm-hmm. because, well, with the Jaime Reyes. <laughs> I mean, I like yeah. the Ted Cords in it. I like the Jaime Reyes. Like, I, yeah. I actually am interested in Jaime Reyes. So, like that book really surprised me in that it jumped. It, it, it so, jumped from my read list to, to my pull list. So. so the 
best compliment I can give it, like the compliment that made me very, very happy reading that book is I didn't feel like I was reading the last like four number ones over again. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got two last questions here. Quick ones. We got one here from Josh who asks, how are there people who still haven't read the Sandman? There are a lot of terrible people out there. That's all I can say. Go read Sandman. Go read Sandman. Yeah, it's only available in like seven different versions yeah. now. Be, I'd love to know what you would well, think of Sandman. We just, well, I just sorted I Sandman. I tried to read it. I told you. I'd love for you to read the entire thing. You come in with your guy line, you're in your black boots, and <laughs> <laughs> and, your, and your Cure t-shirt, and you'd be like, I totally get it, Ryan. I'm going to come to your golf club every month. Hey, hey the, Smith, uh, the Smith girl was pretty cute, so yeah, I might show up next week. I'm back, Ryan. Uh, I'm requesting you know, the Smiths. That that would be hilarious if we could just turn Sandman into the book that turns you God. <laughs> and um, one last. Oh, no, no, no. Because, yeah. well, the funny thing is, I was actually sorting Sandman back issues because you bought a collection that had yeah, some in it yeah. today. And we, you and I had talked about, like, when was the last time we read through it? It's been, it's been too long for me. You know, I think for me, it's been like six years, probably. I think it's been longer than that for me. And one last one from Alex on Twitter. I don't, no know Mitch. If, I don't know if any of you guys will get this question. He says, "How? what are some of your favorite comics member berries? What? Any of you watch South Park? I know you don't. I know you don't. Do you watch South Park? You Not in a very long time. Oh, God. So last week's episode of South Park was absolutely amazing. And you found out that all nostalgia is caused by people eating member berries? Member Star Wars? Oh. Member Star Trek? Remember when these are good? And oh, I have a bad case of that. And these are little berries that talk to you, and then you find out that um, all the racism is actually caused by that as well. That's why people are voting for Donald Trump. Really? Because they've eaten too many racist member berries. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So what are your favorite member berries in comics? What are your favorite... Shit, everything? Remember this old thing that was great? Yeah. Remember this old thing that was great? Yeah, all comics. Like everything in my life? I know. E-Man, Knight Rider, A-Team, 21 Jump Street, MacGyver? The hardest thing about... A lot of the stuff you just named is trying to go back to watch some of it. That's now. why it's mm, that's why yeah. you, you, you eat the member berries and then you go back and do it. And you're, you don't care. I have been rewatching A Team. It's still amusing. Yeah, it's, it has a certain no, charm to search, it. Certain shows hold up very, yeah. very well. Uh, Night but... Rider not so much anymore, but A Team <laughs> actually holds up. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know the black and white yeah. printer inside the car that's printing side to side is a kind of a giveaway. Or Michael Knight still having to get out of the car to make phone calls at a payphone. <laughs> Actually, some of the stuff in a couple more years is going to have a new certain kind of charm to it at that point. No, there's a lot of um, stuff in comic books, like a lot of the 90s X-Men I adore. And some of it I can go back and read. Some of it I'm like, it's interesting how my brain has like edited out these issues <laughs> and focused on these issues over time. <laughs> Yeah, I think nostalgia, especially in comics, as we see by Rebirth, is a very very powerful thing. That There's a lot of great comics out there. Um, but, uh, uh, man, God, if, if you want to talk about comics right now, I mean, Marvel and DC are going through their own member berry war, where DC obviously is going for it, and it seems to be working really well. Kind of just shows to really what the comic industry is. You know, I, we've talked about this at length. I have no problem with new characters and new takes and new concepts, but... Uh, those people aren't buying all the comics. See, this is this is the weird thing in the industry for me right now, and this is just a sort of flat out. I've always viewed the big two as a one does something that works, the other one tries to replicate that. If one drops the price, the other like there's always this kind of like weird balance between the two companies yeah, where one does, one creates a really popular character, the other one creates a knockoff of that character. One does it's, one does vampires, one does zombies. Nah. Yeah. Um that hasn't been the case in a long time. Like it just, at some point, both companies like fuck what the other company is doing. We're not even going to pay attention. That's weird. Well, it's well, it's good. I, I think the thing is, is like I think with Rebirth, they've gotten back to kind of a that, that nostalgia, that comfort that people feel mm -hmm. with with these characters that they grew up with. That that yeah. you know, there there's something familiar about that and. And but it's also bringing it back to just a place that works. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it wasn't it, broken. No, it wasn't. Yeah, and that's the thing is, is 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 do what works, but make it still feel, you know, like it's something that you, you know, you remember reading when you were a kid, like how you felt when you were when you were younger. But I mean, Batman's not the same as when we were younger. But you know, <laughs> it's. Yeah. 
Batman has been pretty much the same for the last thirty years. Once you get once you get past the eighty nine movie, it's been the same for most of that time. All right, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. Thank you, everyone. Listen to this awesome podcast. I want to thank our good friends at Patreon here. These are our high tier backers. Make sure you go support all their stuff. Albert Soy got an app on uh, iTunes called Plant Everywhere. It's a photo sharing app. Check that out. Julian Titus has a Nerds Without Pants podcast at Pixelbit.com. Toby. Ryan has has Preach Podcast. No pants. There are they wear pants on the Preach Podcast. Oh. It's, it's all pants. They only wear pants on the Preach Podcast. In the desert, I doubt it. They wear pants on their head, pants on their chest. Pants I doubt their it arm, in the pants desert. Their feet. Well, well I, that's how you do. I that's how you just, do it in the desert. I just thought they were wearing preacher uh, uniforms. They might. They might. Uh, in also, the desert, though, they're nuts. I've also got a uh, Kickstarter up right now, Cat Story. It's a friend of uh, Ryan Heston, so he's uh, still got quite a ways to go, but he's got about two weeks Wait, left that, on his yeah, Kickstarter. Yeah, that, that's something about that cat. Like, you play a cat? Yeah, it's a little side-scrolling cat game yeah. that his buddy's trying to get uh, made for or, uh, PC, and I'm not sure what else, so check that out on Kickstarter. That, Kickstarter.com. That has, that has a lot more of my interest than the dude that came in here trying to uh, convince us to buy his cat comic book. <laughs> that's a great story. Yeah. Uh, so look for Cat Story on Kickstarter. <laughs> cat Story. Jody Lawson is canon the Triad Comics Anthology at triadcomicstudio.com. Check that out. Read those books. Joshua Redding has a podcast called Tangent Break. Make sure you check that out on iTunes. As well as Twilight of Ages and Dawn of Darkness. A couple books on Amazon. Actual novels. You should read those if you know how to read. John Nesmith has Drinking with Batman podcast at drinkingwithbatman.libson.com. Go get a drink with Batman. Manoa plays Sam Shea and Tail on Bray, a couple of other high tier packers. Thank you guys very, very much. And everyone can back us. Thank you. Patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. Oh, sleeve. Everyone hates Dan Slot. Okay, cool. That's my that's one of my topics for this week. <laughs> comic conspiracy podcast.com, geekbox on iTunes, where you can find this podcast and all of our other episodes. Rate and review us. And special forgot to mention this is very special if you are a Patreon backer. Look for it on our new RSS feed, and please, someone tell me if this thing actually works. If you guys, because like people liked my post, and I'm like, did it work? Like, can you actually use this? Tell me, because I don't. I'm not a backer, so I can't test. Why, why it. aren't the, you a backer, Ryan? Because I run the I run the Patreon. I want you to back so it. I don't actually know if the if if people can get this if they're backers. There's an RSS feed for all our bonus content for all the Bryce Briefleys, yeah. as well as. New uh, Kid on the Block, uh, the Toby and Charlie Roundup. I would totally listen to a New Kids on the Block podcast by Toby and Charlie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know, if we get enough Patreon backers, anything is possible. It's called oh 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 is what yeah. the name of the podcast is called. And we have to take lots of steps to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, no. Toby yeah. was watching yeah. porn on this episode. It, it's, pretty much, it's pretty much twice the podcast for you this week because we recorded a a fairly length. Yeah, so, we got a full hour in. I mean, so so Toby and Charlie present the roundup. Yeah, or the movie and TV roundup, but whatever. So the roundup is yeah. a nice ring to it. All right, let's go with the roundup. The conspiracy roundup. Yeah. So Bryce is no longer the only exclusive guy on the block, but uh, a couple of months ago, I kind of like you know, as a thank you to the to the to the backers, you know, they they do help us out quite a bit. I'm like, you know what, what extra can we do? So I kind of. Thought about you know me and Charlie watch a whole lot of TV and movies, normal, t- normal TV and movies that don't involve superheroes. Right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. I, and well that too, but you know the superhero stuff too, and you know we really enjoy doing the TV conspiracy. I'm like, why not spin off a little bit on? I mean, we'll still do the TV conspiracy here, but yeah. you know. We'll see if we could do a little bit uh, uh, of blue X Men team to the gold team. <laughs> that's the uh, actual team here. <laughs> Uh, but you know, uh, it's, uh, me and Charlie, um, if you ever want to know what it's like when Toby and I actually get together for an extended period of time and just talk, yeah, that's pretty much what this podcast became. It is kind of is because whenever you like hang out, we start talking I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. And then we talk about something else. And then like an hour later, I'm like, I got to go. And then an hour later, it was like, I really got to go. So we originally set this podcast to be like this kind of like Bryce Briefly style, like 15 to 20 minutes, maybe half an hour at most. Wait, wait, wait. Bryce Briefly is, is normally a long winded <laughs> thing. Yeah. It doesn't have a time limit except long. Yeah. Well, it has a time limit of Bryce, we need to record the actual <laughs> podcast now. Yeah. Uh, but Charlie and uh, Toby are on their own time, so they yeah. can yeah. as long as yeah. they want. Yeah, so we kind of, I mean, we, we had a couple of topics we wanted to go through, and, and we ended up going full 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 hour. Yeah. yeah. Now, we went on 
plenty of tangents. Yeah, yeah, this was some random tangent. Uh, tangent. So, I mean, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I mean, like I said, we wanted to do this. Co- I-, I approached Charlie like maybe two months ago. Uh, and then it took us a month to actually get together, uh, and and I had to, you know, if someone is recording a podcast, I highly recommend them to just watch a couple of YouTube videos. Don't do it like me. I just showed up at Charlie's place with a couple of gear and a and couple of mics I borrowed from here like the day before. I'm like, hey, I grabbed me some mics. I went to his house, started plugging shit in. I'm like, all right, let's. Let's try this out and start pressing record. Yeah, there's some interesting outtakes in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's actually the intro. I left it as the yeah. intro, so it's in there. there. Um, I didn't realize the board we had had some effects plugged in. So <sighs> I, beep, beep, beep. yeah, no, no, no. It was like it changed our voices, and I didn't really realize it was doing that. And it was like we were recording. I had no idea. On that thing. It had like 25 different things. Like now I know that had 25 different effects plugs in built in. So yeah. So be uh be on the lookout for a very strange intro where I sound very very deep and Charlie sounds even deeper. <laughs> but we cover uh, what Stranger Things, do some tick, some Jean Claude Van Damme Johnson. Uh, oh, we never talked tick. Did that pilot go up? Uh, yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah, see? We'll Already see. this extra podcast is helping. Yeah, we'll talk about that next week. Um, some Get Down, and uh, what did we wrap it up? Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah. And some, a couple of little tangents. Yeah. So maybe once a month for you, and if you guys like it, we'll you know keep on going. Go. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. Go donate a buck a month. You get that, as well as the Bryce Briefly should all be up there. I think there's six or seven of them up so far. Uh, Damn it, we need to catch up, Toby. I know, we episodes. will. <laughs> So, yeah, do that. Digital.comicsconspiracy.biz is where you can go buy all your digital comics from us. Thank you very much if you purchase through us and subscribe. So you never miss an uh, issue. Issue as well. Also an episode. An episode of this. You can't subscribe through this. At oh, dear God, you're unraveling. Digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. Conspiracy to rock.com, this Brock's video, pull list and blog. Go check that out. Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension, this Charlie's other podcast, is if he doesn't record enough of these damn things. Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. It's my lovely. You know, I really wife. felt left out when Charlie was doing something with his friends. He was doing something here. Then he was doing his Doctor Who thing. I'm like, fuck it. I need Charlie too. <sighs> so I'm going to just go to his house with recording gear and we're going to record some more shit. And it That's works awesome. well that way. Yeah. Geekbox Comedy Button, Good Job Brain, I'll Talk Podcast, and Maka Maka Nations. Thank you guys. Listen to all those. Listen to this. Listen to something else. Oh, jeez.